So Rosie's point about, just to recap for the recording, um, that it is that timeliness and so we will help, we will support you as much as we possibly can and Student Progress also aware of the, um, the nature of the shelf life of your degree and to get that, get, get you uh, through pending you passing everything um, as timely and as efficiently as we can so that you exit with that um, whatever codes you've got. You've got a mixture of codes there in those courses for teacher registration. Um, if things, oh, land type, so I'm just going to go through my list. Um, the land type test, it's for the old degrees, and we're not very old, it's just that these are the, the um, degrees in teach out for your degrees. The land type? Okay, that's okay. Who can rattle it off for us? Yeah, literacy and numeracy test for initial teacher education. The ITE bit is initial teacher education. That's us, you, doing this. You're in an initial teacher education program. Uh, the, land, the land part is a literacy and numeracy test. So it is not required for your degrees, which is kind of handy. However, you would be all capable of passing both the literacy and the numeracy components. There are two components to that test. It's an online test. Um, that's run by ASA, the Australian College of Education, Council for Educational Research. Um, so they run it, it's independent of us. We have most new, newly accredited teacher, initial teacher education degrees have it embedded in some fashion in their qualification. So within that structure of the new degrees, we have it embedded there, which is why you've seen all the advertising about land tight. Um, but in your old degrees, you're not required to do it. TQI know that. Um, but they also, as most professional educators would suggest, that we would recommend that you do it at some stage when you're ready to. Uh, it's an external cost. It's not too huge, so, but you have to log on to the website or go onto the website, see when their time points are. At the moment, they're running three opportunities a year. Um, you register for those opportunities. You pay. You go do it. You get a few tries, three tries, I think, um, all those sorts of things. So all those rules and things are over there, but it's separate to us. It's not a requirement of your degree. But we would strongly recommend that you do it because to take it to a prospective employer to say, and here's my land type evidence that I've done the, passed the land type test, it may add strength to, to what you're doing. Has anybody here done the test? Yeah, a number of people do and have done in both old and new degrees. They just do it when they're ready. That's fine. They get it out of the way. Yeah, it doesn't expire. <laughs> um, and we have a fantastic you know, support structures here on the Moodle sites. Um, there is specific literacy and numeracy support modules um, on the All Teacher Education Moodle site, I think it is. Um, so there are structures that the university has put in place, our faculty, to assist people wherever possible. We have the great MASH Centre. <laughs> MASH tutor over here. Um, so that's fantastic. And we have great literacy educators. So there's lots of, there are lots of opportunities to swat up and to assist. But by this stage in your degree, I would expect that most of you are more than capable um, of passing that test. But you can have a go, have a look on the ASA website, have a go at the diagnostic testing um, and test yourself out there too. And it's a good confidence boost to have it. Um, and while we're talking about support structures and services, the university and our faculty have, there's quite a lot of support structures. You may well have availed yourself over the course of your degree, but you may not have. But in the final year, this final, you know, the, doing the last bit of your journey in your degree, just remember medical and counselling services, inclusion and engagement um, for disability support or for anything else that you need there. Uh, the Ngunnawal Centre, if you're an Indigenous student, for assistance with tutoring. And in particular, the Library Rovers and the Study Skills Centre in the library, just for those extra bits. One of the things that I'd rather that you didn't experience was the anxiety around failing a subject, um, wondering if you're going to fail a subject when you're coming close to course completion and the pressure is on, and especially in, an old, in a degree with a shelf life like this. So I don't want any additional pressures there. So I'm just going to remind you about those support structures to help out. Um, and when in doubt, talk to your unit convener directly and quickly so that you, know, you can work through any issues there. Um, and at any stage, if you think your course completion um, is in doubt, um, please email our faculty support staff too, present and copy me in, and we can work on stuff together. 
because there's all sorts of things. You know, people get sick, people get injured, uh, different circumstances, lots of stuff happens that's untoward and unexpected, unwanted, um, but stuff happens. And with uh, intervention and support on your placement, we see that stuff in action. So we respond very quickly, but what we need is a bit of a heads up would be great. Um, if it's academic work, talk to your unit convener for that. Go and seek assistance from the study skills folk. Um, if it's a Moodle issue with access to quizzes or something like that, email that Moodle help tab, student help tab on your unit Moodle site. Things like that, but being proactive will be really helpful. So these are the kind of common questions that we get um, through course advice, but also in the faculty. Um, a lot of them are structural questions, um, so it's just a little bit of structural advice. Um, what happens if you need to redo something, a unit? Um, you've got a withheld for something or um, an NX or an NC or a fail grade or something like that. Um, seek an appointment with me as soon as possible and work out the best solution. It may be that there's another offering of a similar type or the same thing in another teaching period this year that I can support you in. Um, it may be that all sorts of things. I use the phrase, the wheels fall off the bandwagon. But if all things go astray, awry, then there is the opportunity to transition you into the new degree, into a similar structure to what you've got, but in the new version. And we can bring all your credit across and all sorts of things like that. That would be the worst case scenario. Um, but know that those sorts of things are possible. But if I can have the heads up early, that would be great. Um, so sometimes people need to take intermission from their studies for legitimate reasons, uh, and that's completely fine. Uh, you're entitled to do that, but to have our support in order to transition you into something appropriate for next year or when you're ready to come back would be the right thing to do. So, need to talk about that one. How many credit points do you need to course complete? Unless you're in a grad entry program, you need 96. So, they're in the rules um, and requirements for your degree. So, at the end, we'll have a look at the, um, the course and unit database to just go through and show you how to double check that. Um, 48 credit points if you're grad entry, and many of you are grad entry. Um, Rosie's already talked about when grad ceremonies are on. So course completion is what we're aiming for. That's like the finishing line in the race. So all those metaphors come into play. So you, you've got, we're going for the finishing line. You've got to stay in your lane. This is a sprint run now. You've got to stay in your lane. That's the rules and requirements. Go outside the lane. We have to actually, you might be disqualified, all those kinds of things. But the finish line is course completion. You achieve 96 credit points. We can tick off the bucket list of all the types of units you're meant to have in your degree. Um, then you've course completed, and then we give you your prize at graduation. So that's like standing on the podium a little bit later. So the ceremony is when we stand on the podium and you get solo time there. As Rosie said, if you course complete at the end of semester one or winter this year, your graduation ceremony on the podium is in um, spring, usually around the UC uh, week eight or nine, about that time. Uh, if your course complete in December, then your graduation ceremony on the podium will be in this time of year, autumn, week eight or nine of semester one. Both beautiful times of year. Um, what's the next one? Oh, how do I register to teach? I think Rosie have covered that, so yeah. Touch base with, the, which, with whichever registering body in whichever jurisdiction you're going to, you want to teach in and work in. It's an assumption you'll be with TQI in the ACT, but it may be with Bostes in New South Wales uh, and whatever else they are in Victoria. Right. Yep. Just, just a quick clarification. This is about acronyms. Someone pointed out to me the other day that we use so many acronyms that we expect everybody knows. So TQI is the Teacher Quality Institute. That's the ACT's jurisdiction. So. Overarching Australia is AITSL, the Australian Institute for Teaching and School Leadership. Each state and territory has its own accrediting authority. In the ACT, it's the Teacher Quality Institute. In New South Wales, I think it's current, it was BOSTES. Before that, it was New, New, New South, South Wales, Wales Institute, Institute of Teaching. Yeah. It's now the New South Wales Education Standards Authority, so NESA. NESA. Yeah. Not NASA, NESA. NESA. And they, apparently they like to be referred to as the authority. <laughs> so, so that's the, in Victoria, it's the Victorian, it's VIT, the Victorian Institute okay. of Teachers. Yeah. In Queensland, it's the Queensland College of Teachers or something like mm. that. So, but as Catherine said, each yeah. one has its own registration authority. Yeah, and rules requirements and those things change over time, so. That's another just important point that we do assume that you are registering at OCC. The other thing to note is that there is a mutual understanding
Thank you for that, um, Rosie. And yeah, it is very important to go to those jurisdictions, to those web, their websites. And you know, nowadays it's nice, you can just Google, how do I become a registered teacher in the New South Wales or the Northern Territory? And one of the lovely things about your, the old degrees that you're all in is they were originally accredited through New South Wales. So they will know, they'll understand the, the, the subjects, the units that you've got on your transcript and all those things. So there's a... Yeah, it's a mutual level of understanding and respect between all of those jurisdictions. But having the overarching body of AITSL, and we're all, all our degrees are accredited with those AITSL standards that you all know and 